G'day everyone and welcome to Australia's capital, Canberra. As the road trip continues, I'm heading to the Australian National University. Anton Wallner and the team from the ANU's Nuclear Physics Department are using accelerator mass spectrometry in their astrophysics research. His main focus is looking for remnants of supernovae on Earth. If a close by supernova happens to the solar system and to Earth, then there might be a chance that some material, freshly produced nuclides, radionuclides, might be ejected and they have a high speed, a high velocity. So if they're close by to the solar system, then there might be a chance that they enter the solar system and then can be found somewhere in terrestrial archives, in geological archives. 50% of heavy elements need an explosive environment to be created. Anton and his team are working to understand how those elements are created. This is one of the main motivations. Second motivation is that supernovae are very explosive, very uh, highly energetic. If such events happen close by to the solar system, then there might be even an impact on climate or on life forms on Earth. The first measurements were taken roughly 20 years ago and the results were positive. There were some indications that, that a special form of iron could be produced in supernova is not existing on Earth. So if we find this special form of iron, it would be an indicator of a nearby supernova explosion. Some criticism of that discovery led to further analysis deep below Earth's oceans. And we found everywhere iron 60 enhanced. This is the special form of iron which is produced in supernova and does not exist naturally on Earth. Dating those archives, the study discovered that there was an influx between two and three million years ago and seven and eight million years ago. There might have been a series of supernova explosions and there are some theoretical models trying to understand what happened in the last 10-15 million years in our uh, uh, galactic neighbourhood and they end up with similar models. Research over the last 50 years has indicated that if a supernova happens too close to Earth it could mean the end of life as we know it. A little further away though it could lead to less drastic actions such as climate change. And interestingly, there was a climate change just at that time. Two to three million years ago, there was a climate change, and also about eight million years, there was a climate change. Just around the corner on the ANU campus, Jeff Campbell and his team are setting up an experiment which will give light quantum memory. So the idea is if you want to send uh, quantum information using photons, so you want to encode information in individual photons, uh, you need to have some way of remembering that information. Um, you can't detect it and convert it into uh, electronic signals and then convert it back, uh, because in that case you lose the, the, the quantum quantumness of it, you lose the quantum information. To combat this problem, the team have set up a cloud of ultra-cold atoms. From there, it's a matter of getting the photons written to the cloud. And then by controlling the state of those atoms uh, with other laser fields, we're able to recall the photons that we're interested in uh, in such a way that we preserve the quantum state. Uh, and so that's working towards setting up quantum uh, communication networks for future quantum computers. Quantum computing is one result from this research and the idea behind the next generation of computer technology is to gain a computational advantage. But don't expect to be buying one to replace your home computer just yet. They're initially going to be very challenging systems to build. They tend to, they need to be cooled down to very, very close to absolute zero, or they need um, a lot of supporting infrastructure. Um, and also, they don't necessarily solve um, kind of general purpose computing tasks. They're very well suited to particular tasks. Instead, quantum chemistry and other quantum related tasks will be the early beneficiary for this emerging technology. Jeff's experiment traps rubidium atoms using lasers to cool them to almost absolute zero. And we're able to, to control the quantum state of these atoms very, very precisely um, using a series of laser fields. And that lets us set up a condition where we can um, absorb a photon uh, but then we can undo that absorption. We can reverse it and recall the photon to a traveling, um, traveling optical field, uh, and that allows us to set up this quantum memory um, for um, photonic information. We'll be seeing quantum computers within the next two decades.
A short drive from the main campus, Mount Stromlo Observatory has shifted its focus in the last decade to theoretical applications, following the devastating bushfires that tore through the area, raising hundreds of square kilometres and destroying much of the facility. 18 houses were destroyed at the observatory, um, nine telescopes, the research labs, the buildings. You know, we had PhD students who lost their houses on the mountain, they lost their offices where their work was. Uh, they lost their telescope that was doing their thesis. People uh, literally lost every part of their lives. The new theoretical focus allowed the observatory to resume operations much quicker, but many of the hollowed out domes still remain on the site as a reminder. Instead of looking backwards, let's look forward and let's plan for that. And we took it as a challenge to, to redo our goals and redo what we wanted to do. And it's brought us to really a bigger and stronger observatory than we were before. Dr Tucker is leading research at the observatory, focusing on supernovae. But despite what you might think, exploding stars are quite common. There's about 50 stars that blow up every second in our universe. Um, and so one of the things we've been really trying to do is firstly connect how a star lives and then how a star blows up, but then turning that information into measurements of the universe. So what is the universe made out of, how big it is, how it's growing, and ultimately actually how it's going to end. Understanding the life cycle of stars can help us learn more about the universe because the resulting elements created during the explosion are expelled at great force. So all of the silver, all of the gold, all of the platinum that has been used in our electronics and our lives and our rings uh, has been made in exploding stars. During World War II, Mount Stromlo built optical munitions. So anything requiring a piece of glass for the Anzac force, gun sites, periscope sites, navigating sites, was actually built in Mount Stromlo because we learned how to make mirrors. Well, we've continued that excellence of building astronomy instruments and telescopes into now space systems because what you need to build a sensitive astronomy camera or instrument is not too different from a satellite. So that, that's when we said, hey, these two groups are not, and two things are not mutually exclusive, and Australia is lacking in space technology, so we took it as a chance to really lead that, that development and that role um, into building a new generation of satellites, and we're prepping for building three right now. Dr Tucker is working with the Kepler Space Telescope, looking for planets by the dimming of the star's light as the planet passes between us here on Earth and the star. But it's not the only job that it's tasked with. So we're using Kepler in its abilities to look for planets, but at the spare time in its new mission called K2, uh, to look for stars that blow up, to see black holes that are really eating stars on the span of minutes, and all of the big energetic processes that our universe does uh, in short timescales. The researchers and students at Mount Stromlo are already working towards the next telescope, which will continue a very big naming convention. You know, in astronomy, we always want to build a bigger telescope. It's kind of a competition, um, especially because we name them big or large or very large or giant or extremely large. Or Now there's an overwhelmingly large telescope. Let's not get into that. Um, we are working on the giant Magellan telescope. So this will be a 25 meter telescope. So the mirror will be 25 meters across and that's being built in Chile. Scientists at the mountain will use lasers around the telescope to measure how the Earth's atmosphere is moving because a twinkling star is only doing so because of the elements that make up our atmosphere. If we can measure how the star twinkles, we're actually designing special mirrors that can essentially change shape. They can mimic and change at the same rate the atmosphere is so you can take out the effects of the atmosphere. So we're actually creating a telescope that will be 100 times as powerful as the Hubble Space Telescope with 10 times better images. Some amazing work being performed by professors and students here at the Australian National University. Plenty more that I didn't get a chance to check out purely because of time restrictions. Uh, looking forward to next week here as the Canberra road trip continues. We're heading to the Deep Space Communication Complex for a look behind the scenes at NASA's communication network around the globe. We're talking to satellites. Who knew it's happening? here in the nation's capital. Like, follow and subscribe to trekzone.org on all of these social media channels. Hit me up for a conversation. I'd love to say g'day. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Matt Miller. We'll see you next time.